So hello everybody. Here we are in Sawmill Road in the Milton section of Litchfield looking north and we're about to go on a ride going through some of the most beautiful country you're ever going to see. We're going to go north from Litchfield into Goshen for a little bit then into Cornwall over two big hills. First one Great Hill and then Cream Hill and we're going to come into Canaan and end at the village in Canaan called uh, Falls Village. And in Falls Village, there's a wonderful motorcycle cafe called Toymaker's Cafe. So that's the ride for today, to go through the woods. I am in love with these houses on this section of the road. This is just uh, one of my favorite little rides is to come out this way. Um, this is a pretty little house right there, but just you wait. This salt box, this is one of my favorite places on earth. Look at that. I'm pleased as punch. I've, I've put this on zoom camera. Look at that thing. I mean, uh, the last few rides, we haven't really been getting as much architecture into it because I had, I was really worried that the camera was set in such a way that it would distort if we looked uh, too broadly. And I'm afraid when we look at the, the church in the North Cornwall Meeting House, that's going to be a little distorted. But um, this swamp that you're looking at off on the right, in the fall that turns into the most amazing batch of colors. So uh, around the ne this next curve, there's a, a, a well-developed bit of land that belongs to an estate. Years and years ago, I had a guy stop at the pottery shop, and I've never had somebody stop and have his own bodyguards. And the guy who used to own Macy's had this property. He's not here anymore, so I can talk about that. But um, this is one of those, you know, uh, everything is fixed up. We've just crossed uh, from Litchfield into Goshen, and we're going to be going up one of the, the side roads. So this is going through the woods. I have this game. How far can I get to go to um, toy makers without touching a state road? So this is about as an extreme a way as you can go to get between Bantam, Connecticut and Falls Village without hitting an awful lot. I think there's 1.1 mile of state road that that we go on doing this this particular route. Um, well, being in Goshen, when my kids go off with me, uh, my older boys went to Wamogo. So Warren, Morris, and Goshen got together and did a high school. And so, you know, he they were in Warren, uh, and a lot of the kids they went to school with were up here. Uh, so the farms around here, they, they knew all these people. Um, this section of road is called the East Cornwall Road while you're in uh, the town of Goshen. And when it turns into Cornwall, which isn't going to be too far up the road here, it changes over to being called Great Hill Road. Um, yeah, so when we get into Cornwall, we have two really big hills to go over. One is Great Hill and the other is Cream Hill. And they're both pretty magnificent bits of land. So uh, I try to do this ride, I don't know, at least twice a month. Uh, I'm just looking to see. Oh, okay, we're out at the Cornwall line. There's one of the little roads going off to the side here. There's a, a little she-fox. that just, <laughs> she, she is so funny. She'll lie down right in the middle of the road like, this is, this is my land. Um, I just can't believe how beautiful all this is. Um, we're going to be coming up. I was about to say something about a house, but I think it's a little further up. There's uh, That's where the fox is, right there on the, the right. I had some friends that uh, I played bagpipes with years and years ago. And uh, the 
the wife played bagpipes. Oh, look at this house. This is the one I was going to talk about. This is one of my favorite little um, untouched farmhouses for all of Litchfield County. I bet you on the inside of that thing, it looks like it's 1925. It's the land around it. Nothing has been touched. It's, um, it's been cared for, but it hasn't been touched. So just past that beautiful little farm was this couple I was talking about. There, there was uh, a woman who was wanted to learn bagpipes, and she was married in, in that house on the right there. She was married to a guy that was, in, oh, six foot something, and uh, they ended up getting him to be the, the big guy in the front with the stick, making sure that the bagpipe band went, went in the right place. I guess he called the pipe major. So anyway, that's how I know the people in that place. Um, one of the great stories about this road, in the year 1978, we had an unbelievable storm and the whole state was just closed down, closed flat. But you know, Litchfield County sort of uh, used to snow a little bit more than the rest of them. And I think I had a Datsun truck at the time. And, uh, you know, I, you, when it's two-wheel drive, if you have a truck, you put concrete blocks in the back. A at any rate, we went all the way from my place up to the ski area, which is at the bottom of this hill. We're right at the very top of Great Hill right now. But anyway, we, we drove all the way over and had a full day of skiing over there. On these curves, uh, I saw the most uh, wonderful... It was a, a mother bear with two cubs. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of bear around lately. I don't know. The last few years, we've had a lot more bear. So here we are. We're going down Great Hill. This is one of those hills where uh, if you had an ice storm and there was black ice, you wouldn't. I wouldn't even walk onto this piece of road if it was covered with ice. This is straight down. It's funny with the digital cameras, the up and down doesn't show quite as much. Sort of going down doesn't show, I, I don't think going down shows as much as going uphill. But uh, this is the first big hill in Cornwall. Great hill. Uh, the bottom of this hill, there's a road uh, that we're going to tee into. Great Hollow Road. And off to the left, there was just, it's kind of an amazing story. There was a, a potter, an Italian potter was brought to Cornwall to make Italianate garden flower pots for the garden estates of the 1930s uh, for, you know, Connecticut and New York State. So basically, in the if we turned around and went back the other way, there was a, a valley pottery, I think it was called, but uh, Emmanuel Rondononi's brother, uh, I'm trying to remember, Vincenzo Rondononi had a pottery up at the end of this valley. Very, very private spot. So if we stayed on this road and went straight, it would come out right at the ski area, uh, Mohawk ski area. Uh, I think Mohawk is just 11 miles uh, from the pottery shop. So that's kind of the distance we are from home. Uh, but we're not going to go on that road. We're going to cut off to the left onto Essex Hill. And Essex Hill Road is the road where all the pines were in Cornwall and we had a tornado come through. Uh, I, I was at South Kent School at the time so I think in the early 90s. But this road got hit very hard by a tornado um, around that time and some uh, very very old trees were taken away. It was uh, quite a tragedy for the town of Cornwall to have that come through. So Essex Hill Road is just one of those beautiful, beautiful things to see. Um, 
it's nice doing it this time of day. I, I've been riding in the afternoon more, and I like at this late morning sun is much easier on the camera. I, I mean, you can go east, west, north, south, and it, uh, it doesn't get shined on in the same way, which is really pretty exciting. I think I started to say that uh, before I had the camera on sort of too wide, and then um, I tried three wide for a while, and this ride we're doing it with it all the way on four wide. So it's at a very broad view, which distorts a little bit, but boy, you get a lot of picture from it. It's very, very exciting when it's on your chest like this. Look at that valley. We're, we're coming into the Cornwall Valley. The town of Cornwall, uh, what I would call instead of Cornwall Center, I call it Cornwall Proper, is off to our right. And so we're looking sort of south and west. And we're going to turn north. Um, and at this point, uh, we're going to be coming into the village of Cornwall. So there's a North Cornwall, there's a West Cornwall, there's uh, there's this one, and uh, I think in the village itself, uh, at one point they had Marvelwood School, and earlier on uh, Rumsey Hall started off in this village. So... Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to turn around for a second just so you can see down that valley. So the town is a little bit north of this valley, and the valley goes pretty much due south. So we're going to turn to the south to have a look. This is one of those places where you expect Julie Andrews to come out and start singing The Sound of Music. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? I've been worried about, you know, not fussing the camera, and I kind of wish I had. I think it's a little tilted here, and uh, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not driving on an angle. It's the way the camera is. So yeah, they're calling it Pine Street because, you know, this is the road that would have gone out to those pines that got hit. This is Cornwall Center or Cornwall Proper, a uh, library. It's. This is a really, really wonderful little village. When you talk about idyllic New England villages, this is the real deal. So I'm going to explain what I'm doing here. Uh, at the end of this little bit of road, I'm going to cut out the whole section that is of the main road. Um, and so what's going to happen is from here, we're going to turn on to Route 4 and go up to the four corners where the ski area is. And we're going to turn left onto 128, which is the road that goes uh, over to West Cornwall. Well, in fact, you could go straight here and that would get you to 128 too. But anyway, I went up to the right went up to the four corners and turned left onto 128. And then from the 128, we're going to turn right onto Town Street, which goes up the hill to the North Cornwall Meeting House. So I just cut out maybe two miles of, of Main Road because, I don't know, I just get bored on Main Road. I mean, it, it's really beautiful. I did a whole clip of going along the edge of... Uh, the Housatonic River when I came back uh, today, but this is just so beautiful. I, I I don't think there's anything like it. You know, getting on the little back roads, as I said in another video, it's a little bit like being on the road 50 years ago. So for motorcycling, this kind of road just couldn't be any more fun. There's a little bit of a sweep. going to be going up and to the right and then it's going to bend back and again this is more up than it looks like it is 
I don't know many people up this part of the world, but I, I sure enjoy where they live. When I was a kid, there were a few of our artist friends were up here. I remember Robbie Hare's family was in town here. There are all sorts of people up this part of the world. I don't think Meryl Streep is in this town, but she's nearby. and uh, I'll leave that alone. But there's, there's a lot of that sort of things around. We went pretty close to where uh, Yvonne Lendl used to be. Isn't this amazing? Somebody I went out with years ago rented an apartment in there. So we're coming up on this church, and don't worry, it's not falling down. It's the camera. <laughs> There's something wrong with the way the camera is set. Look at that spire. It looks like it's falling off the back of the thing. Wee! It's falling down. Anyway, that's that's a really beautiful church, and it's uh, uh, they call it the North Cornwall Meeting House. And uh, from here, what I usually do is I go on to this little piece of road, and then right away I take Rattlesnake Road off to the right to hit Cream Hill. But today... I just know at the end of Cogswell Road, there's a beautiful little road called Cherry Hill. And on Cherry Hill is a view that I just couldn't not take you to go look at it. it was, it's just too pretty not to go there. So there's a lot going on in this film. <laughs> It actually took me a few years to find uh, the route to go up by Rattlesnake. Uh, when I first was doing this, I would go uh, on 128, just a little bit further down, and take another one of the side roads up to the right uh, to hit Cream Hill directly. So uh, I think we'll, a little further down we'll see a, a UPS or a, some big truck. And that's the road I used to come in on. And, uh, and then do a, a quick left and a right and go up Cream Hill. But I don't know what got me going to go on the, the other road, onto the Cherry Hill. And I, I went, once I did it, I just couldn't believe that I didn't know that something that beautiful was out there. So, yeah, see that truck where it's coming in on the left? I used to come in that way. And this is a really idyllic, beautiful little four-corner. If you went off to the left, you'd be at the Cornwall uh, Elementary School. But instead, we're going up the Cherry Hill. And uh, this just couldn't be any more exciting. There's a horse farm coming up on the, the right up the way a little bit. You can see the red of it there. It's really fun to um, have this quiet little bike because it's not it's not scary for the dogs or the horses or the people jogging. It's sort of uh, it's really nice having a polite little bike. Uh, makes life a lot easier on everyone, especially when you're taking it to these pretty private places. So the place that we're coming up on. Where this valley opens up, there's this incredible view with a house on a hill above looking out into a valley. And the valley going off, uh, it'll be to our left, um, really looks down at uh, West Cornwall. So kind of below us in that valley there, the Housatonic River is going through there. This house is all by itself up up on the hill having this sort of intimate view of this just again the word spectacular i i realize i'm using that word too much but there are moments where it's maybe magnificent would be a good word so the last time i got off the motorcycle here i 
nobody was home, so I took a few pictures and just looked at it. And um, isn't that just the most amazing view? But it was really heartening because when I turned around and saw the house, uh, the porch had one of the most wonderful plants uh, potted up in one of my flower pots. So I couldn't have been more pleased to turn around and see this incredible view. And then one of my pots was looking at, yep, up in the that left-hand corner in the front there, there was, uh, you know, one of the biggest pots I make was just sitting on that porch. So... I thought, maybe I don't get to sit here and look at this, but one of my pots does. Isn't that just the prettiest thing? Okay, so we're going to go back down Cherry Hill, and we'll be turning on to Cream. It, stuff like this just takes my breath away. Oh, I'm so glad we're on that wide view. What a difference it makes. How is it possible that somebody that doesn't know anything about cameras, they, they're making it so easy for us all to be able to do this. Uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to just, I mean, this is very crude what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> strapping a, a camera onto my chest. So I know there are people that are doing, you know, sort of GoPros on the side of helmets with microphones and all that. And uh, I think it's amazing that without, uh, you know, too much of a stretch, uh, anybody can go off and do this sort of thing. It's really, really fun. And, you know, all the years of looking at these roads, I'm just, I'm very excited to show them to people. Uh, most everybody would be pretty hard pressed to find any of this, you know. So it's it's uh, not like everybody's going to drive out and play around in these backyards. Look at that. So here we go. This is going uh, up Cream Hill, and this is a straight shoot over to Canaan. What we're doing here. This is a very bumpy piece of road. It, it's going to be interesting to see how long it takes me to end up standing up. If you have a, you know, sort of a mediocre suspension on a motorcycle, there are moments where it's just, it's just easier to stand up. Let your knees do the work. Um, this is, I don't know the name of the family, and I really wish I did. This is, again, one family have the bottom of this hill so we're, there we go I'm standing so we're off to our left is uh, cream hill we're gonna hit sort of a, a big uh, left-hand bend um, this is rattlesnake road coming in on the the right so usually I'd be coming up rattlesnake and just go up straight here if we hadn't gone to Cherry Hill and now we're, we're really starting the job of going up the Cream Hill. So there's some very serious working farms. I've used the word farm a lot in these videos, but um, there's two working farms on this hill. One thing you always get when it's a real farm is right away you smell silage and then you smell some of the other things that come along with silage. Uh, this is extremely well worked country coming up here. The other thing to say about this part of the ride is in this section of Cornwall, for whatever reason, uh, this road has had a hard life. Let's just say it that way. Uh, so, you know, when when we're on really big curves, a lot of times I'm saying, you know, you got to keep your wits about you. Well, on a straightaway on Cream Hill, you got to keep your wits about you. This is <laughs> this is a very uh, 
it, it hasn't been cared for uh, in a serious kind of way for at least 30 years. So, you know, the road might have been covered uh, with a new coat or something, but um, there's a subtext under this road that you have to be very, very careful with. In the fall, when the leaves are down, uh, a road like this can just be deadly. You have to be very, very careful about uh, wet leaves uh, when the surface underneath is questionable. And by questionable, I mean, you know, there are ups and downs and little pits and, you know, lots of stuff going on. So coming down this hill, you get to see the ridge of uh, mountains that are going up uh, kind of on the border between Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New York. So Connecticut is south, of course, and you look across into New York from Connecticut, or you can look north and see uh, the beginning of the Berkshires looking across into New York. And we're going to be coming down onto a spot that just has a little wisp of showing that that bit of uh, country. And depending on what's going on, there you go. Depending on what's going on uh, with the weather, that particular view can become uh, quite dramatic. Uh, it's amazing you know with a camera you get here and you go isn't that amazing and with the little little bit that i can see it's like oh that's okay <laughs> when when there are clouds in the sky and the sun's going through and and pitting on those mountains on the other side it's it can be just amazing to see it so the bottom of this hill we're going to be entering into the township of Canaan and off to our right is a road that goes uh, over to uh, an institution that's been in Connecticut forever called Music Mountain and lots and lots of classical concerts have happened at Music Mountain I bet you since the 40s the other thing that's above there is Yale has its music school up in Norfolk. So uh, both both of those uh, spots are, uh, you know, people come long distances to hear the music. Here's a piece of road. <laughs> Look at how that's bouncing around. Oh, you got to be careful on this stuff. I can't oversay that the camera makes it look like we're going a lot faster than we are. Uh, a few people have said to me, boy, you're a hot rodder. And, um, I'm really not going very fast here. This is maybe 40 miles an hour. But when you're on this kind of surface and it's you know doing what it's doing, uh, you have to know what you're doing with it. There's a very nice turn down below here that's kind of a nice surprise. I think we met somebody right here. Oh, not this time. So we're going down and down. It's very interesting to see how many uh, of the people that have weekend houses from the city are are here. Uh, is we're very populated right now. Okay, this is the border. Uh, just when we come out onto this road, uh, couldn't be prettier. So we're. Music Mountain would be in the opposite direction, but we're still on what they call Music Mountain Road. And we're going to be coming down onto the, the railroad street.
Street. It's, I think it's called Lime Rock Station Road. Well, when I'm going to Toymakers, I, I get about here, and I know there's maybe four miles left. My stomach always starts getting excited. <laughs> Because I really like the flute food at uh, Toy Makers. Uh, Greg and Annie uh, are a really interesting couple. A Annie writes books. Uh, she's a very, very, uh, very, very smart person. I mean, every everybody's smart, but she's she's she has an interesting mind that's always working. And uh, Greg is. Firstly, he loves antique motorcycles and is a mechanic for that. And then he's a chef. So he makes, because he knows the history of the old English motorcycles, he has this toy makers and it's called a cafe because you remember the English had cafe racers. So all of, when you go to toy makers, it gets so exciting because there are, uh, uh, all these different people that are interested in vintage motorcycles and you know one day somebody showed up with a 1920 something Moto Guzzi uh, you know with a special little flywheel and there's you know old triumphs and fizzlets or how I can't remember how to say that one and uh, they're all, anyway they're all these interesting um, you know antique motorcycles there so now we're on the flats. Uh, this is the people would have come over from Lime Rock uh, to get on the train here. So when it's called Lime Rock Station, that doesn't mean that this is in Lime Rock. It just means that this is the closest place there was uh, for those people to get the train. Uh, so we're coming up on a piece. This is, we're going to be crossing Route 7 here. And I came up a little hotter on this truck than I meant to. I thought he was moving and he, he wasn't. So I had to do some uh, quick maneuvering to <laughs> slow myself down. That's the thing when you're uh, riding through the woods by yourself for a long time. You kind of, you know, uh, lose it about people. So off on our left here is... Uh, the Housatonic School. This is the the district school for the kids. Now I let's see if I get this right. Kent and Cornwall, and I don't know who else. Maybe Lime Rock, but it's a, a pretty uh, you know like Wamogo. It's a, a bigger school with an egg department, uh, and we're on the little back road that's going to uh, get us over to the center of Falls Village. Falls Village is one of those little villages that just, uh, well, it, it, there's a lot going on there. It's got, it's got an inn. It's got, uh, Bunny Williams has started a very, uh, wonderful sort of, uh, craft and art center. Uh, and then besides anything else, there's this wonderful toy makers and uh, you know the train would come right up to the center of Falls Village uh, Falls Village means that it's on the Housatonic right so it's got a Falls so it's got a railroad of Falls and all sorts of things going on in it and uh, as I say by the time I get to here all I'm thinking about is uh, bangers and eggs uh, Greg gets the best uh, no dines up in Goshen makes a really good English uh, banger you know like a sausage and uh, so when you're riding an English motorcycle you got to go have an English breakfast in up here in uh, beautiful Falls Village the other thing that I think about when I get up around here uh, the woman, Bunny Williams, I just spoke of, started a wonderful garden fair called Trade Secrets to help uh, the women's relief of Sharon. And she was nice enough to let them do it at her house, which is up around here. 
and I remember one time we went to that, it was snowing. So I ended up, uh, oh, pulling off in my car right under that bridge there and uh, warming myself up and changing my socks. So here we are in the beautiful, beautiful Main Street uh, for Falls Village. And Bunny's place is off here on the left. Now wait till you see all these motorcycles. I guess I should start saying my goodbyes because this is uh, when I pull to a stop that's the end of the video. So the place on the right here is Toy Makers. And look at all these motorcycle people. They're just everywhere. Everyone's nice enough. They got their masks on. and But it means that all these motorcyclists can sort of talk to each other. And there's social distancing to get their meal. So isn't that pretty? So thank you so much for coming along for this ride. And I hope everybody stays well and <laughs> they wash their hands and all the things you're supposed to do. Okay, take good care of yourself. Thanks for coming. Bye.